Hello, I'm Sue Romanoff from Edison Group. Today, I'm joined by Rob Barrow, CEO of MindMed, to discuss positive phase two top line data addressing major depression disorder. Rob, could we kick off with an update on your phase two study in major depression disorder? Also, could you talk to the potential read across to your phase two B study in GAD? Absolutely. So we're, we're really excited to see this data coming out of our colleagues' uh, lab in, in Switzerland. So this was an investigator-initiated study of patients with, with major depressive disorder, 61 patients uh, diagnosed with MDD who received two doses of lysergide or, or LSD. And what we saw in this study is a statistically and clinically significant reduction of 12.9 points versus 3.6 points in, in the placebo group on the uh, clinical clinician rated inventory of depression symptomatology scale. So for us is extremely exciting results. It's again, confirmation of many decades of research on the clinical potential of, of lysergide. And given the, as you mentioned, the, the significant reader cross between depression and anxiety, we again feel it's, it's highly supportive of our program, uh, which is looking at, at lysergide in generalized anxiety disorder, but also as we progress considering the, the implications of the opportunity and other psychiatric indications. Do these results provide insight into the potential value of repeat dosing? Also, are there any implications for the current phase 2b dose optimization study or will it influence future study design? So we certainly uh, are, are interested in the findings across multiple studies and uh, our colleague study of, of lysergide in anxiety disorders, which was reported out in 2022, uh, used two doses of 200 micrograms. In this study, the high dose group received 100 micrograms followed by a 200 microgram dose four weeks later. Uh, the, the interesting aspect of, of this kind of study design is that in many instances, what we see is after a first uh, administration, we see near you know, near maximal reduction in, in symptoms. And so uh, while we've certainly uh, observed across studies that both single and multiple dosing paradigms have been utilized, we're particularly interested in characterizing the response after a single administration, which is what we are doing in our phase 2B study, and demonstrating how durable that single administration can be in, in treating symptoms of generalized anxiety disorder. So while, while we, we find uh, that the whole spectrum of dosing regimen that have been studied historically quite interesting and informative to, to the long-term potential of these molecules, uh, it, it doesn't directly impact how we're approaching our, our sponsored clinical research program of, of lysergide and generalized anxiety disorder. Are there any updates that you can share with us on phase 2b investigating MM120 in GAD? Yeah, so this is a, a phase 2b study we're conducting of MM120 or, or lysergide D-tartrate in patients with generalized anxiety disorder. Uh, 200 patients at 20 sites here in the US. And, and the primary endpoint in the study is to demonstrate a reduction uh, in the Hamilton anxiety scale at four weeks post baseline, post administration. Uh, with key secondary endpoint at, at 12 weeks and, and also looking at, at subsequent endpoints uh, between, between one and, and 12 weeks post administration. Uh, there's a, a significant degree of overlap between the, the construct of generalized anxiety disorder and major depressive disorder. And so certainly the, the results we've seen of lysergide uh, in depression now, but also in 2022, our colleagues reported promising data from an investigator initiated trial of lysergide in anxiety disorder. So cumulatively, and in combination with the dozens of studies that were conducted back in the 1950s and 60s of, of lysergide, we feel very optimistic about the, the path forward for this program. Uh, with the results of the phase 2B program, we, we certainly anticipate really accelerating going as quickly as and efficiently as possible into a pivotal clinical program for, for this molecule. And uh, based on all we've seen and all the, the regulatory dialogue and discussions we've had to date, uh, we anticipate being quite efficient and being able to, to go very quickly into that program and, and ultimately uh, have a program that is, is very much similar to how we're conducting our phase 2 study. Are we beginning to see a shift in sentiment toward the use of psychedelic medicines? We just saw the Australian regulatory authorities starting to permit psychiatrists to prescribe off-label therapeutics containing psilocybin for treatment-resistant depression. Do you think the U.S. regulators will follow suit in this sense to allow greater access to psychedelic medicines? So, so what I think we're seeing here in, in the U.S. in particular is a 
strong desire from providers, from uh, policymakers, and, and really across the, the board to make sure that promising new therapies for mental health and brain health disorders uh, are, are accelerated and are ultimately uh, on a path to becoming available to patients. We certainly have a, a backdrop of a worsening mental health epidemic here in this country, especially. And with the promise of these new therapies, we, we believe there's such an enormous potential that we, we really want to be uh, efficient and, and go as quickly as possible so that the patients who could benefit from these therapies uh, uh, ultimately can if, if we uh, if we're successful in, in submitting a marketing application and, and having it approved. So we're seeing really at, at every level, I was just with a, a really leading psychiatrist a couple of weeks ago talking about how transformative this drug class could be and how, how transformative MM120 could be for patients. He, he relayed that it, it almost seems like if one of the first opportunities to really have the kind of impact that he saw becoming a psychiatrist over the last many decades. And so uh, given that that desire to see new therapies come to market and the enormous need from patients, I think we're seeing kind of a unified voice in, in wanting to have uh, a, a real acceleration of the opportunity and acceleration of, of making sure that these products do get to patients if they're ultimately deemed safe and effective. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you, Rob, for your time. If you'd like to learn more about MyMed, please refer to edisongroup.com. Thank you.